Hello everybody and welcome to my channel. My name is Mary Ellen. Hang on just a second. I need to check out my watch. Yep, I was right. It's feeding time for the animals and they look hungry. Some of these animals are domesticated and others are wild, but they are all an important part of the animal kingdom. They each have their own special food chain. A food chain is the feeding order of the organisms within an ecosystem. All food chains start with producers. Plants are in this category because producers utilize a process called photosynthesis to create their own food. Next comes the consumers. There are three different kinds. First are herbivores, which are animals that only eat plants. There are also carnivores, which are animals that only eat meat. And omnivores, which are animals that eat both plants and animals. Finally, we have our decomposers. Examples of decomposers are bacteria, fungi, and worms. When a plant or animal dies, the decomposer breaks it down into the soil so new plants can use their energy. So, energy just keeps getting reused. If any part of the food chain gets broken, then it hurts the entire chain. A really fun activity to complete if you're teaching online is to have the students go outside in their yard, a park, or an area near them and then find three animals to complete food chains on. I already showed you a food chain that I completed and then here are two more examples that were done by a student on a duck and a chicken. As we pull out and see the larger picture of how all of these animals work together, this is called a food web. So our next step in our activity is to take the three food chains from our chosen animals and create a food web. This is bringing the many chains together. The food web is quite a bit more intricate and it displays how the animals within the ecosystem rely on one another. One thing that can cause a little bit of confusion on a food chain or food web is the direction of the arrows. Now, I know that rabbit didn't eat that snake, so why is the arrow going from the rabbit to the snake? Well, let's think about us humans for a minute. When we've been out exercising, maybe playing sports, working a long, hard day, sometimes we haven't eaten for quite some time. So we'll go home and fix ourselves a nice, nutritious meal. When we've consumed that meal or put it into our bodies, we've received energy from the food that we've eaten. It's the same with the snake. Once he's eaten the rabbit, he's received energy from the rabbit. So the arrow is representing that energy. Thank you guys so much for joining me today. Again, this is a really fun activity and it's easy to implement through online classes as a homeschool parent or even if you are conducting in-class lessons. Please let me know down below if you try it out and don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and remember to be proud of your work, productive in your day, and positively joyful.